Thanks. Well, we continue to follow the search and rescue efforts after that cargo ship crashed into the Francis Scott Key Bridge. And then, of course, it collapsed early this morning in Baltimore, Maryland. Uh, we have that video to show you here. Rescuers pulled out two people from the water so far. Uh, we know six others are still missing. They're calling this an active search and rescue effort still at this time. Uh, we know there was a construction crew on that bridge as well. Uh, we learned the ship's crew issued that mayday call moments before that ship took down that bridge. Uh, now we have Ken Cobb with us, a professor of sociology from Furman University. So thank you for joining us this afternoon. You're an expert on river pilots here mm -hmm. specifically. So I just want to talk about what we know right now so far, all the information we're getting. Um, again, that container ship uh, that lost power hit that support of the bridge, causing it to collapse. I mean, it came down so quick, almost looked like it was out of a movie, like yeah. like a toy. So from, from your point of view, what did you make of that scene when you saw that this morning? Well, it's a thousand feet long and it's a hundred thousand tons. Mm -hmm. And when you lose power, the rudder has no ability to steer the ship. It's basically floating adrift. And when you have that much mass at that velocity, there's really nothing that can stop it in time. So I'm a sociologist, I study river pilots, I've been on right. the bridge of these really large ships when they're coordinating with the shipmaster or the captain and they're trying to give directions. And it's really subtle. It's usually port five degrees, starboard five degrees. Uh, but when you lose power, there's really nothing you can do. And so uh, it looks like they dropped anchor at the last second, right. which is an emergency measure. Uh, but again, when you have that much mass moving that fast, there's nothing that can stop. There's nothing. I know and that's what a lot of people are wondering, like what could have been done? There really doesn't seem there could have been much at that point. Right. Right. Now we know the ship, this is interesting, is not American. Um, so what are foreign ships like that really doing on our rivers and waterways here in America? Well, um, there's not that many U.S. made ships doing container shipping of this size anymore. We've kind of gotten mm -hmm. out of the shipbuilding business. Um, there, the majority of it is uh, foreign vessels and foreign crews. Now, when they come into U.S. waters, they have to take on an American pilot. So this is a Maryland Bay pilot that will board the ship when it's coming in, or in this case, when it was leaving the dock, it was escorted out by tugboats into the channel. The tugboats separated off, and then it was the, cap the pilot was directing the shipmaster or the captain to get stay in the channel before it lost power. And okay. so this can pose problems because uh, these large vessels, when they're out in the ocean, they are not accustomed to dealing with anything nearby. If you're in the open ocean and there's another ship that comes by within a mile radius, alarm sound, the captain is roused, they're brought to the deck, and then they need to deal with that as an emergency situation. But in these bays and harbors, they might come within two, 300 yards of other vessels, or in this case, trying to navigate between the spans of a different bridge. And so wow. it's, the ships aren't suited for this type of nimble handling. Um, uh, and so that's why they bring on local pilots with local knowledge that have been doing this almost their entire lives to help them do it. But if you lose power with a ship, there's really nothing that can be done. Right, which, uh, you know, it, it really is starting to shine a light on some of this. I, I think for a lot of Americans, we don't really think about something like this happening. So how do you feel today will really put more of an emphasis when it comes to bridge safety and maybe barge safety, cargo ship safety yeah. moving forward? Well, I mean, people are going to feel the pinch. During COVID, when we had the supply chain disruptions, we could see it. We could see mm. empty shelves. We could notice that there weren't things. Container shipping is what enables you to be able to get a toaster and 48 hours for less than 20 bucks. And so you don't understand this accident occurred at 1.30 in the morning. Mm -hmm. This stuff is moving 24-7, 365 days a year. And so it is crucial and critical to the American economy. It's just we don't we don't we're, we kind of got out of the game of building the ships and and crewing the vessels uh, we've outsourced that to other countries that saved us a lot of money in terms of enabled us to get products a lot cheaper but sometimes it, it might come at a cost and so the the u.s has fallen pretty far behind in building its its infrastructure to enable ship building as well as the merchant marine supply the pool of potential merchant mariners uh, to operate these vessels mm -hmm. Well, good perspective. Uh, we really appreciate that insight, uh, Professor Cobb. Thank you for joining us. And of course, uh, we're hoping for the best when it comes to the six other people who are still missing at this time. Carrie, back to you.